Chaplet Toolkit by Nathan Scott. Nathan is a member of the Performance Tools team at Red Hat. He has several years of experience developing open source performance analysis software and has also contributed to the Linux kernel in the file system space. While being active in both the Debian and Fedora projects, he also occasionally dabbles in porting open source software to Mac OS X and Windows. Additionally, Nathan has spent several years tasked with the analysis of performance problems in production computing environments, providing a real-world foundation for his main area of interest, systems-level performance analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Scott. Is this on? Thank you very much. Um, yes, long time since I wrote that, wrote that bio, and I've forgotten how long it was. <laughs> but yes, I work at uh, Red Hat in the Performance Tools Group. So our group is responsible for tools like Valgrind, um, System Tap, um, and some libraries like uh, LibPappy, which are sort of fairly low-level sort of libraries. Um, and my background is in systems-level programming, so I sort of only dabble in high-level languages like Python. Um, but it's always good fun to do so. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a toolkit called Performance Copilot, uh, which I've worked on for many years. Um, it's about a 20-year-old project now, um, and with a few years ago someone sent through a series of patches which added um, Python support to the layer on top of a number of our APIs. Um, and I had no Python experience whatsoever at the time, so I thought uh, I just left it for a while, see if anybody else would pick it up. Um, but then I got employed by Red Hat, and I got told like, Red Hat's really into Python, we need to make this work now. <laughs> um, so I picked it up and have been running with it for a couple of years with another fellow at Red Hat, um, Stan Cox. Um, and most of my talk today will be about the work we've done and how you can use that work if you'd like to, to extend this toolkit. Um, so the outline for my, my talk, I'm going to give you an overview of PCP. It's a relatively uh, unknown set of tools, even though it's been around for a very long time. Um, tell you all about it and do a little bit of a, a dive into some of the tools and how they fit together. Um, I, I usually give this talk for about an hour. There's a lot of tools in PCP, so I'm going to have to skip over a significant amount of stuff, but feel free to grab me afterwards and, uh, if you have an interest, and we'll talk more about what else is available in PCP. Um, then, uh, so that'll be the first part of the talk, first half, and then I'll talk about how to extend different aspects of PCP using Python. Um, we'll see on the, on the next few slides, I'll talk about this division within PCP of collecting software, uh, collecting uh, performance data and uh, monitoring performance data, and that's a, a very clear division within PCP. Um, so I'll get, go a bit more into that and um, focus on the Python stuff with an example of um, something that we want to analyze. Okay, so what is PCP? Um, Obviously, something that's now supported by Red Hat, it's an open source product. Um, it's important to know it's not just a tool. It's not one command that you just run and suddenly you know everything about performance on your system. Uh, it's a toolkit of commands that uh, sort of a lot of small commands that cooperate together and produce a larger whole. Uh, or things, small tools that work on a particular part of the problem. So lots of little tools that work together. So Python fits well into that because we can make lots of little Python tools really quickly. Um, but I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, primarily we're talking system level performance analysis. So what I mean by that is by a system in this context is either one or a group of computers that are cooperating very closely to form a single system. That might be a, a web application with um, one application server, database servers, NAS servers, uh, lots of systems communicating together, uh, usually distributed. So PCP has this distributed nature built into it, so it can monitor multiple machines at once. Um, and uh, so it has this live and historical aspect as well. So we consider a sort of timeline of performance data that you might see. You see tools in this area which are looking at the system right now or in the ilk of top and VMstat and things like that which can only look at the system as it's running. They, they look, extract data from the kernel and report it straight back to you. 
Um, so PCP is very good at that too. Um, but PCP also has a strong focus of looking back in time um, and recording data that's happened um, and uh, particularly being able to run the same sort of tools that you would run in live mode but also being able to run them on historical data. So I'll talk a bit about how we do that and how to do that sort of thing in Python. Um, an area that PCP doesn't really do, at least not directly, is sort of forecasting stuff and magic eight ball, looking into the future, capacity planning, that sort of thing. So we certainly support that through the collection of historical data in PCP, but that's not an area where we actively provide tooling in PCP. Other people build on top of PCP to provide that sort of stuff, but we don't provide that in the base of PCP. Not that we couldn't, it's just that we don't today. Um, and of course it's extensible, so um, we'll, I'll talk again about this idea of monitors and collectors being a, a separate concepts and you can extend it in either direction. Uh, so let's talk about that now. Um, so this is the fundamental live mode architecture that PCP uses. Uh, when I say live mode, I'm talking about analyzing the system that is currently running uh, as opposed to the historical system, which I'll talk a bit about as well. Uh, we can divide it into two fundamental parts, and that's the collector and monitor concept. Um, so over there on the, the green corner, we have uh, a collector system that could be the same system as a monitor, or it could be remote from the monitor tools. Um, the, the key daemon that's involved here is PMCD, so the performance metrics collection daemon. Um, and its architecture is such that it has plug-in pieces that know about specific domains of performance data. So this domain concept is very important. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but these domains are all sort of self-contained things. So a, a domain agent is one little piece of software that extracts data from that domain and provides the performance data through PMCD to client tools that are interested in that data. Uh, so they'd have individual little areas of interest, like there's a, a Linux kernel PMDA, there's different database PMDAs that you can choose to plug in. Things like mail queues, application servers, Cisco routers, all sorts of things, MKHD. Each of those is a different domain and has a little piece of software that knows how to extract performance data from that domain and make it available to clients through PMCD. So everything goes through PMCD in live mode. Uh, so over on the blue side, we have uh, a collection or some sample monitoring tools. We have many, many monitoring tools available in PCP, but these are some of the key key ones, there's a tool called PM Logger, which is the tool that fundamentally is involved with recording performance data. So it look, connects to a live PMCD and extracts data that you tell it to on the frequency that you tell it to, uh, and then records that data for later playback. Um, but it's a monitor tool that does that. So there's that little bit slight confusion there sometimes between the, the, in the collector monitor split. Uh, PM Logger is a monitor tool, even though it sounds like it's collecting data, it's recording data. PMCD is sort of extraction is more the collection concept in PCP. Um, we also have PM Chart um, and PMIE as other example client tools. Uh, PM Chart, I'll show a little bit of a demo later if I have time. Um, it's just ba a basic strip charting tool, lets you produce charts of any kind of performance data on your system that's been made available to it. Uh, and PMIE is a, a rules engine, so the IE stands for inference engine, and you feed it rules about performance data that are interesting in your system, and it evaluates those rules on a sampling interval that you tell it. Uh, and if they become true, then it will take some action based on those rules. Um, and there, there are many other client tools, so there's probably 30 or 40 different client tools that come within PCP, and that's the, this idea of a toolkit where each tool does its own little thing and does it well. Um, so the core concept within PCP is this idea of a performance metric. Um, a performance metric is just something you can measure and that you can extract that value from the domain, be it the kernel or uh, a daemon or whatever, uh, and make it available to the other tools. Uh, so PM Info is an example of an, another client tool. Um, it's a very simple one. It just like, you tell it a metric or a group of metrics, and it will report information about those metrics um, live or historically. Um, so there's just some sample uh, sample arguments there. I'll come back to those. But the 
key concept here is this metric name. So we've got disk.dev.read. We have a hierarchical namespace of metrics. Um, so in this case, dev uh, devices, so disk devices and read operations. Um, so key concept there is performance metrics names. We'll come back to that later. Uh, another key concept about metrics is they have very clearly defined metadata about them. Um, and this is a sort of a difference between PCP and several other monitoring tools that they don't have this rigid definition of what a metric is. Um, but it's a strength of PCP in that it allows um, the monitor tools to be totally independent of the collector system. And that metadata is things like the size of the value, uh, whether it has a set of values or it's a singleton. So this indom concept uh, over here, uh, that's saying this value has a set of values and those, that set down here is the set of all disks. So S if this is a Linux system, SDA, SDB. On Windows, that might be CDE drive. On Mac OS X, it'll be whatever the BSD kernel exports. Um, and we have a set of values associated with those. Uh, each instance has its own separate value for this particular metric. So the, the number of reads on SDA, number of reads on SDB. Um, and so there's other interesting bits of metadata. We have this concept of semantics of a metric. Uh, a metric is considered a counter, which is a free running counter. It's very commonly used in the kernel. This example right here is just whenever there's a read operation on a device, we bump the counter by one, and it just keeps going up. And the, the kernel exports that value straight out to user space. That, that's the counter. Um, but we also have instantaneous metrics. Those are metrics that when you sample, they're useful to you straight away, which a counter isn't always. You often want to compare it to the previous sample and see how it's changed within the sample interval. For instantaneous metrics, that value is interesting to you right away. It might be something like the number of users logged in or the amount of memory that's currently being used for something, that sort of thing. And the third kind of semantics uh, is a discrete metric, which is similar to instantaneous, but it's further classified in that we don't ever expect it to change. So this might be the number of CPUs in the system or the number of disks, for example. Um, so this metadata is going to become important to us later because we're going to be learning um, a little bit about how to extend and write Python uh, PMDAs so that we can add metrics using Python as our imp import mechanism. Uh, I've talked a bit about the values. So, uh, obviously all metrics will have a value because that's kind of the, the central concept. Okay. so. Uh, in the second part of my talk, I want to talk to you about um, an example that where we might uh, uh, be looking at some particular thing. In this case, we'll be looking at the, um, a device mapper cache target. So this is some thing that we've decided we want to be able to analyze and monitor. So this is a new domain that we're going to plug a domain agent into the system for. Uh, so stepping back a bit, what is device mapper? A uh, device mapper is a, a driver in the Linux kernel, lets you do multiple devices, um, uh, lets you have multiple devices working together to do some high level device concept. Uh, in my example here, I'm going to, I was interested in figuring out how device mapper cache works. Um, this is a concept that lets you have a, an SSD, like a fast device, sitting in front of a slower device and optimize the access to that slower device using a, a sort of a, an SSD in front of it. So typically SSD would be a, a much smaller device and you'd have a large device in the back end. Obviously this is something that's very interesting to analyze from a performance point of view. So there's instrumentation in the kernel that's exported. Um, I didn't actually find any other user space tools that consume this data when I was uh, researching this particular thing. Uh, which was surprising since the whole point of it is to optimize the access to the, the backing store. Um, but I'll show you how we can go about producing such a, a tool. Um, so the other interesting thing, which we'll see later, uh, in this device mapper cache thing, there's this metadata device that it um, maintains, and that just looks at, uh, maintains the state of the, um, the differences between the two devices. So you may have written into the cache that's not yet written to the backing store, that needs to be kept somewhere, and it's kept in this 
device map, a metadata device. Um, it's not particularly important for our purposes. I just sort of let you know that that's there. Is there's some of the statistics that are related to that. So we'll need to understand that concept. Uh, and I think that lives partially on the backing store and partially on the SSD device. And you configure it when you make these devices. Um, but ultimately, the end goal is to produce this single device that's presented to the, the upper level of the, the system so that um, you can mount a file system on that device, for example, and access the device more quickly. That's the idea. Um, so our goal um, is we'd like to have some new DM cache metrics available in PCP. Um, that'll let us do... Uh, if once, as soon as we have the collector piece, even without writing any of our own sort of monitoring tools, uh, we can immediately start using tools like PM Chart, which is this tool over here. So over here we're plotting uh, device mapper cache metrics. Um, so as soon as we've done this collector extension, uh, this kind of functionality is straight away available to us. You don't have to write any monitoring tools yourself. Uh, these generic tools will be able to consume that data for you. And the tools are, are quite flexible, so you can plot anything you want. So we, here I've got various device mapper cache metrics about reads and uh, write misses, write hits on our various devices. But at the same time, we can plot other metrics that other people have written domain agents for, like uh, metrics coming out of the kernel, like the um, patterns of memory utilization over the system. Um, and so it's extremely useful to be able to look at what's happening in, say, the device mapper cache target at the same time as what's happening in the, the block devices that sit behind it, as well as looking at the memory and any other activity on the system in this sort of unified view. So we have a common time axis down here uh, and everything updates, uh, which hopefully I'll get to in the demo, which I'll show you later. Um, we also get other simple tools like PMVAL, which can straight away start reporting the values for us, like simple console tools. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute how to go about making a tool like that out of Python, with just a, less than 100 lines of code. You could produce something that produces this kind of value fairly simply. Um, but that's just sort of sampling this one metric. I've given it this metric on the command line, pointed it to remote host. Like I was saying, the remote host concept is baked into PCP. Uh, all of the tools support being able to monitor remote hosts, sometimes multiple remote hosts like this tool can support multiple remote hosts at once. Um, but they can also support looking at archives and historical data all through the same tools. Um, I think spent enough for that one. I'm, I'm not really going to go into exactly what all of the metrics mean. This is more just about teaching um, how to write Python code to extract this data. Um, so once we have some device map cache uh, devices, uh, we can extract metrics from the kernel using this device mapper command. You run dm setup status target equals cache, and it will print out a line for every cache on the system um, in this fairly easily parsed format. Uh, it has the cache name at the start of each line, and then a whole series of values that are things like how big the cache is, like how many blocks or how many sectors are in this device, uh, the reads, reads, hit, read hits, read misses, write hits, write misses, that sort of thing. Um, so our goal, uh, well my goal when I was researching was just to write a simple Python PMDA that parses that and makes that data available live. So this PMDA, which I'll talk about in a minute, DM cache agent, uh, simply runs this command whenever it's asked for the current values and it returns those via PMCD to whatever client tool happens to be looking at it. And that client tool might be recording that data or it might be uh, just displaying it on the console or it might be displaying it in a chart. Uh, that's not the, the problem of the collector side to worry about how it's going to be used. The collector side just worries about extracting the data. Um, so... Uh, key concepts in a collector. Um, first of all, this concept of a domain, which I've talked about a bit now. Um, each domain agent has a, a unique identifier. It says, this is my domain, uh, which is a single number that's assigned to it. Um, and these are important. You have multiple different domains for the different, they, they're used to distinguish the different domains so that when a request comes in for a metric, it can be easily routed to uh, one of the collectors. 
Um, the, so the collector will have a domain uh, and it will provide a set of metrics and those metrics may have a set of instances like we saw before with the disk devices. In our case, we're going to have uh, device mapper cache devices that we're going to export data about. So in terms of the Python code, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, most of what we need to do is um, hidden from us. We just import this uh, pcp.pmda module. Uh, we subclass uh, a PMDA object, so we might subclass the PMDA class and create, say, a DM cache class. Uh, in our constructor, we just call add metric for all of the different metrics we have. So each of these values up here typically would correspond to a, an individual metric. Um, and when we're adding the metrics, we provide that metadata that I was talking about earlier. So the names of the metric, like dmcache.dirty, dmcache.readmisses, that sort of thing. Um, so th there's an exercise in modeling here for whoever is writing a collector. Uh, so we need to figure out what all these values mean, and what their metadata is, so what units they're in, if they're in bytes, kilobytes, whether they count as instantaneous values. Uh, so we plug them into the constructor. Uh, and at that point, we've defined all the metrics that this agent is going to provide. Uh, and the only other interesting piece of code that we need to write is this fetch callback that supplies those values. So that code is just going to parse these strings, pluck out each of the values, and when asked for one of the values, it'll send it back. And that's basically all it needs to do. Um, ideally, doing it fairly quickly because it's operating in live mode. So um, we're being asked live for these values and th there's an expectation they'll be supplied quickly. Um, yeah, that's probably enough for that slide. So that was the collector side of things. Um, oh, I've got pointers to the code later if you're interested in how to do that side of things. Um, but it's extremely useful to write collectors. If you have a production system, you almost always will have something that you have an interest in its performance. And usually there's some way to get the performance data out. Um, so PCP is providing a framework which you can manage your performance across your whole system, um, as well as plugging in your own data, including using Python. Um, so from the monitor side, so going back a few slides, I had the green and the blue side of things. We're now talking about writing client tools on the blue side, like PMChart or PMIE. Um, so I've, as a demo, written a, a simple little tool, which I've called this PCP DM cache tool. Um, and all it's going to do is consume the metrics that we've produced from that command. So this tool could be running, uh, so in my example here, I've pointed it at a remote host from where I am. So you, you get the remote host functionality uh, basically for free through the Python APIs that we provide, um, as well as the historical component. So instead of running it against a live host, I could have pointed it at an archive from yesterday and I could say, please report the values that you recorded at 2 a.m. yesterday morning from this PMDA and it'll magically provide those values for you. Um, but the, so the specific metrics are not particularly interesting. Uh, we're more talking about the, um, how to go about implementing this kind of thing. Um, but ultimately, this kind of tool is almost trivial to write. Um, and more complex tools like charting tools and things, they're certainly feasible if you wanted to write those in Python too. Uh, so finally a few notes about how to go about um, building such a monitor tool. Um, it's like I was saying, the, the main aim of the game here is to report the metrics, uh, whatever metrics we choose. Um, in that example, if I go back one, um, you'll see here I've got um, this operation count here, that is a metric that actually comes out of the kernel PMDA. Um, so the, the kernel PMDA on Linux exports generic device mapper metrics. So this is showing an example of how we can pull metrics from multiple different domains really easily. So all the client tools do is talk about metrics in terms of their names, like dmcache.readhits um, or kernel.all.load should be the load average. Um, so it's very easy for them to get performance data from anywhere and to produce a nice summary. Um, but anyway, moving right along. So that, that comes from the kernel agent in my example. That comes from our new DM cache agent. Uh, and the way to go about this in Python, you import 
from this pcp.performancemetrics convenience classes mo uh, module. Um, you basically just create one of these metric group manager objects. Uh, you feed it some metric names, so the metric names you're interested in. So in our case, the new metrics we've added and some other kernel metrics that we're going to report. And then you provide a little metric group printer subclass, because all we're going to do is print it out on the console. Um, and this guy does all the hard work. So it organizes uh, sampling rates. Um, if you want to just restrict to a certain number of samples, like at 2 a.m., between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. yesterday morning, show me the samples 10 minutes apart. All of that uh, you don't need to worry about in high-level Python code. It's all done for you. Uh, like I was saying, you don't need to worry about the source. You can just sort of say, oh, okay, today I want to look at this remote host or that remote host, or today I want to look at yesterday's data. Um, that's all handled for you by the PCP itself. Um, and time window stuff, like I was talking about, you might want to look at 2 a.m. yesterday morning or at 10 o'clock something happened on our production system yesterday. Um, so you have that uh, sort of baked into PCP and available. Um, uh, remote time zones, command line options, a lot of stuff is all handled for you. Basically, all you have to do as the high-level uh, Python programmer is do the, the console dumping or however you want to display the data. You don't need to worry about packaging it up. Okay, that's a good time. Um, so there's some pointers to the code if you're interested in looking at, at how to write Python code to do this sort of thing. Um, this is the collector side of things. This is the monitoring side of things. All of the PCP code is here, so it's all committed in there. Uh, there's an excellent guide to writing uh, all of the different things we've talked about. Um, this is a free online book that you can read. Uh, it also has sort of tips for instrumenting your code if you are uh, instrumenting your code, so above and beyond what we've talked about today. Um, I didn't really have any time to talk about this guy. This is a debugger for PMDAs, so it helps you to write new PMDAs and test them once you've written them. Uh, th those are the pieces that add your new metrics, so that will help you out there. Lots more information on the PCP website. Uh, and there's a couple of articles and demo videos on the Red Hat developer blog about PCP. Um, now I've got, I think, two, three minutes. So I'm going to quickly give a demo, <laughs> and you can start taking questions while I fire that up, if you like. Okay, so I'll quickly demo. Oh, it's not on that slide. Um, so we have a series of files here. So these are files that have been created by the PM Logger tool, which is recording data. Um, and you can invoke it like this. So it's just one of the PCP tools, a client tool. Uh, the key piece of information there are the things like the configuration file, the third option there, pmlogger.config, which is something like this. Um, so this is a guy that says, I want to record these metrics, and you pass it in sets of metrics, uh, you give it um, sampling intervals, uh, you can specify different intervals for different metrics and it records them into a file like this guy. So that's a PCP archive that I recorded the other day. Um, we can quickly... This is a simple strip charting tool. So, for example, it comes with a series of can views, things like CPU utilization, um, but also we can find um, any metric that we happen to have recorded. So, in my example, we created some DM cache metrics. This is all coming out of uh, Python code. So let's plot, say, the dirty blocks for each of these devices. Um, let's choose those two.
this is a time control that lets us move through the archive to look at the data that we've recorded. So we can jump around anywhere within the archive, sort of play it forward and watch change in values over time, um, which is extremely useful for analysis, obviously, as you, you might be being told to look into a problem at 2 a.m. yesterday morning, 10 o'clock in the evening. You can quickly jump to that time and get a good idea of what was happening on the system. Bear in mind that you can be plotting anything here that was happening on the system. There's literally thousands of kernel metrics, and lots of other tools beyond these to support um, analysis and finding which metrics are changing quickly over time. So, um, but I've only got, a, got time for a high level overview today, so that's just one of the tools. Go for it. Um, do you know if people have integrated this kind of stuff into graphite and online metrics reporting type things? Yes. Uh, there's a project. That